Chapter 18 During the whole of that day, in the extremely different conversations in which he took part, only as it were with the top layer of his mind. In spite of the disappointment of not finding the change he expected in himself, Levin had been all the while joyfully conscious of the fullness of his heart. After the rain it was too wet to go for a walk, besides, the storm clouds still hung about the horizon, and gathered here and there, black and thundery, on the rim of the sky. The whole party spent the rest of the day in the house. No more discussion sprang up, on the contrary, after dinner everyone was in the most amiable frame of mind. At first Katavasov amused the ladies by his original jokes, which always pleased people on their first acquaintance with him. Then Sergei Ivanovich induced him to tell them about the very interesting observations he had made on the habits and characteristics of common houseflies, and their life. Sergei Ivanovich, too, was in good spirits, and at tea his brother drew him on to explain his views of the future of the Eastern question, and he spoke so simply and so well. That everyone listened eagerly. Kitty was the only one who did not hear it all, she was summoned to give Mitya his bath. A few minutes after Kitty had left the room she sent for Levin to come to the nursery. Leaving his tea, and regretfully interrupting the interesting conversation, and at the same time uneasily wondering why he had been sent for, as this only happened on important occasions. Levin went to the nursery. Although he had been much interested by Sergei Ivanovich's views of the new epoch in history that would be created by the emancipation of forty millions of men of Slavonic race acting with Russia. A conception quite new to him, and although he was disturbed by uneasy wonder at being sent for by Kitty, as soon as he came out of the drawing room and was alone. His mind reverted at once to the thoughts of the morning. And all the theories of the significance of the Slav element in the history of the world seemed to him so trivial compared with what was passing in his own soul. That he instantly forgot it all and dropped back into the same frame of mind that he had been in that morning. He did not, as he had done at other times, recall the whole train of thought, that he did not need. He fell back at once into the feeling which had guided him, which was connected with those thoughts, and he found that feeling in his soul even stronger and more definite than before. He did not, as he had had to do with previous attempts to find comforting arguments, need to revive a whole chain of thought to find the feeling. Now, on the contrary, the feeling of joy and peace was keener than ever, and thought could not keep pace with feeling. He walked across the terrace and looked at two stars that had come out in the darkening sky, and suddenly he remembered. Yes, looking at the sky, I thought that the dome that I see is not a deception, and then I thought something, I shirked facing something, he mused. But whatever it was, there can be no disproving it. I have but to think, and all will come clear. Just as he was going into the nursery he remembered what it was he had shirked facing. It was that if the chief proof of the divinity was his revelation of what is right, how is it this revelation is confined to the Christian church alone? What relation to this revelation have the beliefs of the Buddhists, Mohammedans, who preached and did good too? It seemed to him that he had an answer to this question. But he had not time to formulate it to himself before he went into the nursery. Kitty was standing with her sleeves tucked up over the baby in the bath. Hearing her husband's footstep, she turned towards him, summoning him to her with her smile. With one hand she was supporting the fat baby that lay floating and sprawling on its back, while with the other she squeezed the sponge over him. Come, look, look! She said, when her husband came up to her. Agafia Mihalovna's right. He knows us. Mitya had on that day given unmistakable, incontestable signs of recognizing all his friends. As soon as Levin approached the bath, the experiment was tried, and it was completely successful. The cook, sent for with this object, bent over the baby. He frowned and shook his head disapprovingly. Kitty bent down to him, he gave her a beaming smile, propped his little hands on the sponge and chirruped, making such a queer little contented sound with his lips. That Kitty and the nurse were not alone in their admiration. Levin, too, was surprised and delighted. The baby was taken out of the bath, drenched with water, wrapped in towels, dried, and after a piercing scream, handed to his mother. 
Well, I am glad you are beginning to love him, said Kitty to her husband, when she had settled herself comfortably in her usual place, with the baby at her breast. I am so glad. It had begun to distress me. You said you had no feeling for him. No, did I say that? I only said I was disappointed. What? Disappointed in him? Not disappointed in him, but in my own feeling, I had expected more. I had expected a rush of new delightful emotion to come as a surprise. And then instead of that, disgust, pity. She listened attentively, looking at him over the baby, while she put back on her slender fingers the rings she had taken off while giving Mitya his bath. And most of all, at there being far more apprehension and pity than pleasure. Today, after that fright during the storm, I understand how I love him. Kitty's smile was radiant. Were you very much frightened, she said. So was I too, but I feel it more now that it's over. I'm going to look at the oak. How nice Katavasov is. And what a happy day we've had all together. And you're so nice with Sergei Ivanovich, when you care to be. Well, go back to them. It's always so hot and steamy here after the bath. Chapter 19 Going out of the nursery and being again alone, Levin went back at once to the thought, in which there was something not clear. Instead of going into the drawing room, where he heard voices, he stopped on the terrace, and leaning his elbows on the parapet, he gazed up at the sky. It was quite dark now, and in the south, where he was looking, there were no clouds. The storm had drifted on to the opposite side of the sky, and there were flashes of lightning and distant thunder from that quarter. Levin listened to the monotonous drip from the lime trees in the garden, and looked at the triangle of stars he knew so well, and the Milky Way with its branches that ran through its midst. At each flash of lightning the Milky Way, and even the bright stars, vanished, but as soon as the lightning died away. They reappeared in their places as though some hand had flung them back with careful aim. Well, what is it perplexes me? Levin said to himself, feeling beforehand that the solution of his difficulties was ready in his soul, though he did not know it yet. Yes, the one unmistakable, incontestable manifestation of the divinity is the law of right and wrong, which has come into the world by revelation, and which I feel in myself. And in the recognition of which, I don't make myself, but whether I will or not, I am made one with other men in one body of believers, which is called the Church. Well, but the Jews, the Mohammedans, the Confucians, the Buddhists, what of them, he put to himself the question he had feared to face. Can these hundreds of millions of men be deprived of that highest blessing without which life has no meaning? He pondered a moment, but immediately corrected himself. But what am I questioning? He said to himself. I am questioning the relation to divinity of all the different religions of all mankind. I am questioning the universal manifestation of God to all the world with all those misty blurs. What am I about? To me individually, to my heart has been revealed a knowledge beyond all doubt, and unattainable by reason, and here I am obstinately trying to express that knowledge in reason and words. Don't I know that the stars don't move? he asked himself, gazing at the bright planet which had shifted its position up to the topmost twig of the birch tree. But looking at the movements of the stars, I can't picture to myself the rotation of the earth, and I'm right in saying that the stars move. And could the astronomers have understood and calculated anything, if they had taken into account all the complicated and varied motions of the earth? All the marvelous conclusions they have reached about the distances, weights, movements and deflections of the heavenly bodies are only founded on the apparent motions of the heavenly bodies about a stationary earth, on that very motion I see before me now. Which has been so for millions of men during long ages, and was and will be always alike, and can always be trusted. And just as the conclusions of the astronomers would have been vain and uncertain if not founded on observations of the seen heavens, in relation to a single meridian and a single horizon. So would my conclusions be vain and uncertain if not founded on that conception of right, which has been and will be always alike for all men, which has been revealed to me as a Christian, and which can always be trusted in my soul. 
the question of other religions and their relations to divinity I have no right to decide, and no possibility of deciding. Oh, you haven't gone in then? He heard Kitty's voice all at once, as she came by the same way to the drawing room. What is it? You're not worried about anything, she said, looking intently at his face in the starlight. But she could not have seen his face if a flash of lightning had not hidden the stars and revealed it. In that flash she saw his face distinctly, and seeing him calm and happy, she smiled at him. She understands, he thought, she knows what I'm thinking about. Shall I tell her or not? Yes, I'll tell her. But at the moment he was about to speak, she began speaking. Kostia. Do something for me, she said, go into the corner room and see if they've made it all right for Sergei Ivanovich. I can't very well. See if they've put the new wash stand in it. Very well, I'll go directly, said Levin, standing up and kissing her. No, I'd better not speak of it, he thought, when she had gone in before him. It is a secret for me alone, of vital importance for me, and not to be put into words. This new feeling has not changed me, has not made me happy and enlightened all of a sudden, as I had dreamed, just like the feeling for my child. There was no surprise in this either. Faith, or not faith, I don't know what it is, but this feeling has come just as imperceptibly through suffering, and has taken firm root in my soul. I shall go on in the same way, losing my temper with Ivan the coachman, falling into angry discussions, expressing my opinions tactlessly. There will be still the same wall between the holy of holies of my soul and other people, even my wife, I shall still go on scolding her for my own terror, and being remorseful for it. I shall still be as unable to understand with my reason why I pray, and I shall still go on praying. But my life now, my whole life apart from anything that can happen to me, every minute of it is no more meaningless, as it was before, but it has the positive meaning of goodness. Which I have the power to put into it.